What a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful feeling. Hi. Oh. Hi. I was concentrating on my garden. And that's what I'm going to tell you a story about. What it means to grow food, your own food, in the local Santa Monica community gardens. So I'm Chris, and for 30 years, my partner and I, Randy and I, have been able to walk 14 blocks from our apartment down two blocks from the beach to the Main Street Community Gardens. So I'm going to tell you a story about what it's like to grow a lot of your own food, and like Mark was saying, to know where it comes from. It doesn't always look beautiful, but it tastes fabulous. And like Casey was saying, you know it's history. So, imagine, as I set the scene, it's early light, and we unlatch the gate, and a butterfly flutters forth, and the tracings of the snails are marked across the path. And there's George's Main Street Garden, two blocks from the beach, marigolds and sunflowers, peppers and squash. And then there's Michael's, roses and edamame. And then there's cordelias. Not a lot of food there, but a gorgeous rock garden and cacti and all sorts of different flora and fauna. Then there's ours. The garden is a place of creative cultivation. You're not a consumer there. And since 1976, the Santa Monica City has dedicated prime property over on Main Street between Hollister and Strand, and set aside after two years permanently by 78 that these spaces would be for the local residents to grow their own food or to grow whatever beautiful flowers and other materials that they would not sell but share and enjoy. It's a fabulous place to dig in. So I'm going to tell you what it's like to spend a day in the garden and give you an understanding of what its purpose is in a city like Santa Monica. So for 30 years, most of which I haven't had a car, we have built the soil in that little community garden with lots of other people, composting 25 years ago by taking a wheelbarrow down the streets and getting glass, grass clippings and all sorts of things. Today we took our own kitchen scraps down. And Robbie, who lives in an apartment across the street, across um, Nielsen Way, had brought over his fruit clippings from his fruitarian diet, and he had left them there for us to put in our compost. When Randy lifted the, the uh, cover for the worm bed, it was lively. There were the squirrely little creatures who, as a kid, I would never have touched. But as an adult, I am fascinated. It's one thing to fall in love with a tomato, but when you fall in love with an earthworm. <laughs> and for those of you who know, Darwin's best friends were earthworms. Because they are, in fact, the soul of the soil. They will take that source of material you give Today, I think we had everything from leftover bok choy, again grown in the garden, to coffee grounds or eggshells or whatever. And we put them with a variety of other materials and layer it, and there are those little worms just chew them up. And it's their castings that create the hummus that over time, the humus over time, will become rich black gold. Now, when people ask me, how is it that the city of Santa Monica, such a wealthy, prosperous community, would have devoted prime property across from the beach to such a silly endeavor? 
I laugh because I say, you can't make enough money to do what we do. That's the real commonwealth. And that's the value of the priceless kinds of foods that you can create there. What we have growing in the garden now, everything from cilantro, parsley, arugula, romaine lettuce, butter lettuce, carrots, bok choy, chives, garlic, broccoli, collard greens, turnips, leeks, garlic, and that's just this season. It's in about a 15 by 15 plot. In the city of Santa Monica, there are three big community gardens. The biggest one is on Main Street, where we have our garden. And for a, a meager fee, but a lot of work, you as a resident could have a community garden. Yes, it does take a lot of time sometimes to get that garden. We have 69 plots over on Main Street, over on Park Avenue, between Santa Monica Boulevard and Broadway. We have about 30 plots. And over on Euclid, we have about 15 plots. Not a lot in the formal fenced-in areas, but we are growing everywhere. We are teaming with homeowners who have places they want people to work with them on growing food. And you would be amazed at what you can do on a porch, on a front yard, in a backyard, on a windowsill, or in any, any place. The community gardens have existed since 1976, 36 years. Imagine that. They're older than the farmer's markets. And they are a powerful place to make an understanding of your relationship is not just with food, but the planet and with yourself. They're community gardens because, yes, we share with lots of different people from across the, not just the neighborhood gardens, but across the planet. Today we had people from Aspen come in. I've had people from Australia venture in. I learned about a new tomato today called the Zapotec which is uh, actually an heirloom from the Zacatecas Indians. And who should have been growing it by, but a fellow, not a fellow community garden, but a chap who lives up on 20th Street, who built his own redwood boxes and just had come over to the community gardens to learn what he could do. It's his university. He actually calls it his mainland, and he's an island. I like that analogy. Imagine an archipelago of gardens throughout the city. If any of you can imagine rooftops and boulevards so that gardens could be growing everywhere. Our schools have gardens and the kids do eat. For those of you who have students, children who are students, they eat salads made from the community gardens and we have lots of different ways to bring you aboard. So let me tell you what it means to be a community gardener in Santa Monica, besides growing your own food. It can mean taking a group of children through those gardens and helping them to understand where their food comes from and where they can grow themselves. It meant for me to team up with a young woman named Kristen last year, who was a Girl Scout, and she decided to teach other children how to make compost and to teach elderly Japanese people how to make compost. And it was amazing that what she did with one project and then discovered the world of gardening is right in front of her. It means this year we'll take nutrition students from Pepperdine through the garden and to help them understand how growing their own food means growing a life. And it means that your culinary talents are suddenly sparked. So we eat seasonally. You've heard about the White House Garden and how they eat seasonally as well. Well, you may not know that urban gardening beyond Santa Monica, New York, Washington, DC is landing in the secretest of places in Nairobi, in places in Kenya where you wouldn't imagine, in grain packages and back alleys because they have no more arable land. So when you think about the community gardens in Santa Monica, 
we've got to think about it's not just a luxury, it's an essential reality for where we are on the planet. And Santa Monica's sustainability efforts formally have committed to these gardens. So for any of you who are interested in truly living sustainably, try growing your own food. Then you don't have to water the food in the refrigerator. You pick it and you take it home. Within 24 hours, you eat the most nutritious foods. And you know when you have to thin the beds out, those sprouts are sometimes the most nutritious. So you would be amazed at the variety of foods you would discover, and even the flowers that you can eat, or the ways that you would not imagine the leaves that provide iron and calcium and all sorts of proteins that you would least expect. So if you were like me and hated lima beans when you were a kid, because you had bird's eye frozen or the jolly green giant, <laughs> You would be amazed at how flavorful limas and fava beans and all sorts of crazy vegetables that you can't imagine would be. The community gardens can be found on not only on Main Street on your, in your waking hours, but on the website, not here. I didn't bring any because I'd love you to reach out. And you can find us on the web, you can find us on Facebook. Most important, you need to take a walk into the community gardens on maybe a weekend morning, because they're always open. And if you're there with the early light, and then you go over to the farmer's market, you'll have what your own pickings. You'd be, even not as a gardener, surprised at what we'll give you. And then you can go over to the farmer's market and pick up those heirloom tomatoes that we didn't have a chance to have enough for you. So please come and find us and learn how to grow your life. Thank you.